clearly false because zero not equals to minus one. Okay. Okay, so two is not in the code set, but it is in the ideal generated by this code set elements. Okay, uh, this uh, this this example is very important for you to imagine what are you doing in every quotient read. Okay, once you work out one example, you should you can imagine what happened in the other ring. Okay, no. Any more question before we take a break from this example here? Yeah, if you can work out uh, what happened inside the code set here, inside the ideals here, you could uh, generalize this example to other cases. In other cases, we just take portion with different polynomial. That's all. Okay. Yeah. Any other question before we take a break? Okay. Oh. And, and, and the idea you saw in the example, yeah. generate, generate, generate the new. You mean? You mean, oh, this, 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 how you generate the whole ring? How you generate the whole ring? Okay, good question. How you generate the whole ring? Yes, all the multiplication will be inside the ideal, correct? Yes, correct. And then? You will. Mm, correct. Yes, correct. So, I mean, okay. So, the most intuitive way to see how this ideal generated generates the whole ring is you need to consider all the multiples in your ring. Okay. And then you take all the multiples, multiply with one, you will always get back itself. Actually, you get more things, right? But because when we consider equivalence classes, they string to one thing. So how to think about this? Go back to the Z mod and Z case. Okay, if you don't like N, you like, for example, three, pick three, okay? Z mod three Z. So in this case here, what is, what, what is the analog of one plus, one plus this uh, ideal here? So the analog there is the ideal generated by the multiplicative identity, which is one. So you can take zero times one, one times one, two times one, three, three times one. You go back to zero again. So you get you get all the code set for you. Okay. Now. Can you imagine? Yeah. Yeah, right. So the main thing is because of this one here. This is a multiplicative identity. Yeah. So when you multiply a multiple of uh, one plus t squared minus one here, you just, what do you do? You just, what you do is just the, exactly the canonical map. What does the canonical map do? You send the elements to the, to its representative. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. What should I say about this? Huh? So, 
okay. Uh, Is there anything? Let me think. Okay, so for example, maybe maybe I want you to see one example here. So for example, t squared plus t, okay, plus one times one plus this. What is this? What is this? This is equals to what? T squared plus T plus one plus the ideal generated by T squared minus one. I can absorb this factor into this ideal, right? Because this ideal is all the uh, multiple. And then what can I do? You see? I have a multiple of t squared plus one again. So you see here on the right hand side here is a multiple of t squared minus one. Here is t squared minus t squared plus one. So I don't like this. So I change this. Okay, I make it t squared minus one here as well. So this means what? I can absorb this t squared minus 1 into the ideal. Correct or not? Here is the multiple of t squared minus 1. I can factorize so that these two terms add up together, still a multiple of t squared minus 1. So this is actually the whole set of uh, t plus t squared minus 1. OK? So this means what? On this. Uh, Top here, I have what? I have the coset of t squared plus t minus 1 plus t squared minus 1. So I show that these two coset is the same. Okay, so you can pick t squared plus t minus 1 as a representative, or you can pick t as a representative here. It is like in the Z mod tree Z, who can you pick as your representative for zero bar? You can pick zero. You can pick three. You can pick six. Okay, here I can pick t squared plus t plus t minus one, or I can pick t. Okay. This calculation is uh, very important for you to see what are the equivalences in the code set. Okay. Yeah. Okay, let's take a break until 9.15. Hey, sorry, 9.24. Okay. Okay. 所以看quotient ring的话 你就要看它的code value 啊 OK 謝謝這個我們只是按的通過我們只是做一個事情 然後你就慢慢要想去反正都是都是講那個cosec嘛,然後但是沒有沒有不是講cosec,所以我剛才就是一個重點就是這一題我不是在討論cosec,我是討論ring。但是問題是這裡的ideal是generated by cosec。
，所以嘞，对，为什么你想要去呃 factorize 它？不然怎样找它 cos？ 想找它 cos？ 这题这题我也不用 factorize 来找 cos 啊。刚才讨论那一题，我不需要 factorize 来找 cos 了，我可以直接，哎，它 cos 都不用 factorize， 你看，都不用 factorize。只是说我要找它的 representative， 可能我要 factorize。但是如果我要我要找 cos 的话，我不用啊，我就是像王英讲啊，我拿我拿全部 element 乘它就好了。只是你要 identify 谁跟谁一样罢了。哦。cos 就像王英讲啊，我就全部乘嘛。但是谁跟谁一样，你就要去 check 了。比如说这个 step 这样，我可以 check 到 t square 加 t minus one 跟 t 是一样。嗯。cos。Other than that， 我不好讲出来。But yeah， 因为这题就是上次我问你们那个问题，就是其实它不只就那四个 cos，actually 好像是 infinitely many cos 那个。嗯，因为你想想看，你切白 t square minus one， 所以你全部。Lower degree 的 t square， 嗯，都是 linearly independent 什么？嗯，嗯，是。你 t OK， 你有 e， 你有 t，OK，、okay, 这是两个 independent 的 polynomial， 但是你还有 combination， 你还有，呀，你还有 combination， 那些全部都 linearly independent。所以这一点呢，因为这个是 ID， 这是 ID， 我做的东西就是，因为我知道我是，啊，我 multiple 的话就是，因为它 principle 还是 principle， 所以才可以看到，因为它是 principle ID， 所以才可以看到。都可能自己想把西瓜，我想得出来吗？对，我想。两边的 multiplication， 呃，就是呃 ，element wise。Addition 还是 multiplication？ Addition 跟 multiplication 都是啊 ，element wise。对，主要都是。所以这边是 equality of step。啊，对对对 ，OK， 是。然后，再 analyze 逻辑，逻辑来看的话，这边就明白了。然后这边是因为，但我们。这个 cos 就是，呃，我们算到那四个 cos 是跟这个有关系吗？什么关系？就是、呃、那四个 cos， 这四个 cos， 嗯，跟那个有什么关系 ？OK， 这四个 cos 是不一样的 cos 来。对，啊，对，我就是要问的是，它这四个是不是呃，因为刚才讲它。嗯不只有它的它的 quotient ring 里面，哎，是 quotient ring， 不只有这四个，呃，这四个 represent， 对，不只有，嗯，对，不只有。你看我加出一个新的东西，就是新的 concept 这个东西。对，所以它这个其实就是一个 z， 如果丢弃 z 的话就是 z， 然后呃，它不是 z and 了，那它差不多就是一个。Yeah, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, um, yeah, um, yeah. So why am I wrong? 也没有好讨论 that here， 因为我们的 confusion ring 是 C， 所以应该要 as star as C， as star as。哦，对，对，我们有 S 大 S C， 因为 C 可以乘 E， C U 可以乘 T。可是乘正数，乘正数我加乘就给了不多，就是通过 specific 的话呢，因为多比较通透，因为什么原因？因为这其实有点难，分析起来。Okay, let's take、uh, attendance. Uh, Venus. Okay, Le Tian, Wei Zhe, Shan Er, Yan Ke, Zhe Rui, Stephen. Okay, 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 St
Stephen， 思雨，呀，金生，顺林。海伦 ，Yes， 金波，啊，王英，李双，英奇，何一，雪岩，嘉叶，嘉叶，李凯，袁家，袁家，耶，文硕，耶，一定。玉维、燕博、呀陈烨、也林哎林金、呀董杰、一个那个一周、呀丁宇、也柳青、柳青那些、丹晨、苏宁。李，天，李天，德轩，呀，莹莹 ，Yes， Grace， 赛叶，嘉文，明修 ，Michelle Ryan， 艾丽，雪梅 ，You may not hear， 紫妍。切片，但是你这个草根的感觉，你能不能找出来？对，你这草根的找出来，找不出来，你到时候你发给我东西。好，我这边不一样，我这边是改变，就是。Okay, let's start. Yeah, let's start. Um, so let's have a replacement on Friday again. Okay, for the past Monday. Uh, let's go to the same classroom. Okay. Um, I'll try to book it. If not, uh, we just go to that classroom. If that classroom is occupied, we just move on the spot. I think because that time should be quite empty because it's five o'clock already. Is it okay? So we will meet at the same place. I will make announcement. Ah, huh? yeah, sure. Go classroom use. Yeah, if not, we just move to nearby classroom. Okay. Hey, that time is three to five. Is it? Okay. Yeah. Okay. But I will try and book it formally. If cannot, ah, we just go to that classroom first. Very. You mean the lecture hall? Okay. Yeah. Let's make this Friday again. Okay. Uh, let's continue with a uh, new topic first, and then next time we will do tutorial again.
Uh, I think this is uh, 11.15 if I'm not wrong. So what is adjoining uh, elements means? Okay, so motivation. So the motivation here is C. Okay, how we, how we build C. What's the definition of complex number? These are all the linear combination of 1 and I. But one special thing here is I square has to be equal to minus 1. How I add them? I just add components wise. Okay. AI plus BI, how I add with A2 plus B2. I just add components wise. A1 plus A2 plus bracket B1 plus B2I. How I multiply AI plus BI with A2 plus B2, oh, sorry, A2, A1 plus B1I times uh, A2 plus B2I, how I multiply? I just open the bracket. But when you open bracket, right, you will get the terms I square. Okay. So I need to tell you what happened to I square. So I square to minus one. So you return to uh, just scalar. Why I get I square? Because everything I consider here is commutative. I commute with, uh, okay, I won't tell you where is A and B. So where is that and B? Uh? A and B are in real. Okay, so this I here commute with the real numbers. So we are working in a commutative ring setting is what we have built so far. Okay, commutative ring, everything commutes. Polynomial ring commutes. Okay, the x commute with the uh, coefficient. Okay, so how will you write this? So this is actually the ring of Ri, R adjoint I, okay, linear combination of I, but I kill all the higher degree monomial. Okay, I kill all the higher degree monomial here. Okay, makes sense or not? So, in Ri, what do you have? We have like uh, A cubed plus one, for example. But under this quotient here, so, so in R join I, quotient by I square plus one, what happened? I cubed plus one becomes minus I, Plus one. Okay, or not? this is a bit like the free group, the relation in the free group. Okay, I kill i square plus one. I send i square plus one to zero. It's the same, uh, rep uh, same coset representative as the uh, zero. Okay, because here we consider additive coset, right? What's the additive? Identity here is zero. Okay, so i square plus one equals zero, which means i square equals to minus one. Okay, okay. Uh, but what have we learned last time? Okay, we can really regard this as a polynomial ring of x. Okay, so we can regard this as we can abstract it as just polynomial with one variable. Okay. Make sense? Make sense? So what's the isomorphism here? I just send i to x. That's all. Then you prove that it's a subjective. Uh, uh, what's the kernel? Uh, right? okay. So the isomorphism here is exactly sending i to x. Okay, or not with this uh, motivation. So what is C here? C is just real number. Okay. And uh, you consider the polynomial ring of uh, X over reals, and then you introduce a relation. S square have to be equals to minus one or S square plus one equals to zero. And then you will build this uh, complex number. 
Any question? So far? Ask, uh, just ask, uh, just feel free to ask. Okay. Okay, let's continue. Uh, so when you ask question, right, don't uh, afraid to ask wrong question. I uh, just ask. So a definition is uh, a ring that contains another ring as a subring is called a ring extension. Okay, ring extension. So for example, you have, you have already seen a ring extension here. So example, uh, R, uh, a join I over I square, I square, let me see, yeah. So R, a join I, so let me define, okay, let me define R, a join I to be, uh, to be all the elements A plus B I, Okay, maybe you're confused, right? Okay, let's don't confuse you. So we will see that C is a ring extension of R. Okay, C is a ring extension of R. Okay. C, uh, C is a ring extension for, for R. Like this, okay? Accept or not? Okay. Why is it C an extension of R? Or a ring extension of R? So C is a ring extension of R because R is a subset of C and uh, R is a ring. Okay, subring. Subset and ring. So it is a subring. Okay. Okay. So now I'm gonna introduce a uh, a little bit sim confusion uh, definition here. But let's see. So n element okay, alpha is a uh, adjoint. But we now formally introduce what is adjoint to a ring means. Okay. So an elements alpha adjoint is adjoint to a ring R. If what? If if a ring extension, okay, which is R, I will write as a R square bracket alpha, okay. R what is what we call informally last time R adjoint alpha. Okay, this is isomorphic, isomorphic to the polynomial ring, okay, quotient out by uh, polynomial, okay, polynomial F. Why is this F here? So when I write like this, right, what does this mean? Left hand side got, got alpha, right hand side, why is the thing is not defined there? Polynomial I defined for you already, but F I haven't defined for you. So you should expect what? This F has to be something to do with the alpha. Okay, so I need to tell you how this F relate to alpha. Okay, where? Where what? You want to guess how to relate a polynomial with an element? So where what? Where alpha is the root of f. Okay, alpha is the root of f. With this f here, of course you have to live inside the uh, polynomial ring, but the root itself is not necessarily is not necessarily in the coefficient ring, okay? 
and then such that this uh, ring extension is optimal. Okay. So we are a bit uh, abu abuse of notation here. So we could write, for example, this C. So we could write, we could write, for example, just now we could write uh, C equals to R adjoin I. Okay. So whenever you see I here, right, you should ask, this I is uh, intermediate or not? Or this I satisfies some relation? Okay. If it is just intermediate, you just see I as a X, so it's a polynomial ring. But if I say I has to satisfy some relation. Okay, so this means for this means uh, more precisely, this is just Rx quotient by the quotient by S squared plus one. So that this I is the root of this function. Okay, what's the root of this function here? Okay, so you need to ask what's the root of this function? What is the thing that satisfies s squared plus 1 equals 0? It is x equals to square root minus 1. I don't know why is that. Okay, actually there are two choices, plus 1 or minus, square root minus 1. I don't know why is that. Let's call it i. That's why in your uh, high school, you will write y i equals to square root minus one. Because that's the thing we don't know. Let's call it i. But i, one thing I know about i is i square plus one equals to zero. That's all. Or i square equals to minus one. That's all. Okay or not? Okay, that's why you will see the textbook, right? I mean, lower form textbook, you'll write i equals to square root minus one. Because we introduce i as a root of this uh, polynomial here. Okay. Does it make sense? Okay. Uh. Okay. Yep. All right. So, so one remark here, actually last time we have seen it in the last lecture, last two lecture. So if alpha is in R, right? Okay. What is this? If I just adjoin anything inside my ring, what do I get? What do I get? Why is the, uh, why is, what's this uh, root? What's the function? Okay, what's the polynomial that have alpha as its root? It is just x minus alpha. Okay, it's just x minus alpha. Okay, but what is this? So what is this? This is just R adjoint alpha. Where is R adjoint alpha? Last time I showed you. It is just R. Okay. It's just R. Okay, hold on. Okay. Yeah, it is just R. So you need to be careful, huh? You cannot just look at this R alpha here, right? and you need to see where this alpha is from, okay? Otherwise, you will confuse, super confused. You don't know whether this alpha is an intermediate or what. You need to see what's the condition put on here, okay? Alpha is not random Rx, huh? okay? This alpha here is an element in R. Okay, so you need to be able to switch between this. Maybe this is why abstract math is hard. Because we have a lot of condition that control this uh, variable. So what's important is the variable. Is the variable, not what is uh, written there. What am I saying the right thing? So the most important thing in uh, mm, pure max is the uh, meaning behind the symbol. Okay, it's the meaning behind the symbol. So you cannot just uh, read the symbol like this. You need to read from the front or look at the back. So they have some relation. Understand or not? This is part of the reason why pure max is hard. You cannot just uh, compute like locally. You need to know what's the condition that govern the whole calculation. You get what I mean? 
So this is the thing you have to learn from Pure Max. Okay, no. If I just show you like this, what's the difference between R adjoint alpha and R adjoint X? No different. Okay. But when I tell you this alpha here is in R, then story becomes different. Okay or not? Okay. Okay, uh, so let's uh, write out this uh, proposition and then see how far it can go. Can run C or not? Okay. So we have a ring. Okay. We have a ring, first of all. And then uh, let fx be a monic polynomial. OK. With a positive degree. And over. Okay, and then notation again. So what is at R alpha here? Okay. So this is the ring R X over the ideal generated by F. Okay. Uh, such that F alpha equals to zero so here you should uh have the prototype what's the prototype i showed you just now complex number okay so you have real real number as a ring monic polynomial x squared plus one okay r alpha just take the complex i okay complex number here okay what's the what's the proposition here so first, okay, first, so the set of a root, which is one alpha up to alpha minus one, is a basis of R adjoint alpha over R. Okay. Okay, so we are somehow like we have a vector space here. I have basis. Okay, we have vector space, but vector space is over field. We are over R. So this is the first instinct where you see, uh, which is what we call a, a module. Okay. Uh, 
say, oh, I put quotation mark here over print. I put quotation mark here, I just want the axiom. I don't want the coefficient. Okay, so how do I do addition here? Okay, how do I do addition here? So I want to study it as a ring, right? So I need to tell you how I add. Huh? Yeah. I need to tell you how I add, and then I tell you how I uh, multiply. Okay, yeah. This is uh, generators. Uh, slightly different, slightly different. So slightly different. I think I will talk about generators and bases in the group part. Slightly different. The uh, bases, we only care up to linear combination. Generators, generators where I can take alpha times alpha. Here, 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 here. Oh, he, uh, here is a ring structure. Ring structure. Yeah, ring structure. Ring structure. Okay, we want to see the ring structure in here. R alpha. So it's like I want to define addition and multiplication in C. How do I define addition and multiplication in C? How do I add two complex numbers together? How do I multiply two complex numbers together? Okay, I want to do it in a universal way, general way. Okay, as long as we have this alpha satisfying f alpha equals zero, how do I add when I consider this ring here? How do I multiply when I consider this ring here? Only these these are defined, then r joint alpha become a ring. Okay, we want it to be a ring. So how do we add? Okay, how do we add? Uh, how do we add? Okay, so the addition here is what we call the uh, vector addition. Okay, meaning what? So I add the coefficient uh, we add the coefficients Uh, we add the coefficients. Uh, what should we say here? We add the coefficients with the uh, same mm, monomial. What are the monomials here? So these monomials are alpha to i. Okay. Is it okay? Okay. And then how to multiply? How do you multiply? How do you multiply? How do you multiply? How do you multiply in a complex number? Inner product. Mm. Huh? What? You just you just distribute it. Yeah, I just distribute it. So uh, if uh, you take two, two element in this ring here, okay, you take two element in this ring here, what do you do? What do you do? So you let can, can can see up to here no? and the back see up to here does the podium cover here up to here okay so i finished this line so let how to get this beta beta one and beta two here okay so you let g1 x and g2 x 
in Rx. Okay, such that G1 alpha equals to beta 1, and then G2 alpha equals to beta 2. Okay, and then uh, you can multiply G1 and G2 now. Okay, you can multiply G1 and G2 now because we know how to multiply here, like the distribute. Okay, we distribute. And then, what is beta 1, beta 2? Okay, this is exactly G1 times G2. And then, what is beta 1, beta 2 here? We haven't quite. And we haven't quite reached there yet. We finish off this. And you can look at the G1. Uh, G1 times uh, G2. Okay, so this thing is in X. Okay, and then what does this happen? So you remember that this is a ring quotient by F here. And here, Monique, what do you want to do? Monique, Monique polynomial. You want to divide. Where right? you want to divide? So I can consider this part here. So we define beta one times beta two as uh, R evaluated. This part get killed in the quotient ring. Again, what's left over is Rx. Then you just sub x equals to R. You should think of this setting in the complex number. How I understand complex number. Okay, for example, so example here. Okay, finish out this example and then we can go. So you can think of how you multiply this two together, for example. Okay, by by understanding how this two multiply in the uh, uh, x over x squared. Okay. No. So this one becomes x squared plus 2x plus 1. But inside this ring here, this equals to which concept? OK, the coset of this equals to what? Minus 1 plus 2x, which is equals to 2x. Okay, I don't compute this. I think I guess this is 2i. Open it up. I just substitute x to i. Okay, no. Okay, we will resume next lecture from here. Yeah.
我们现在我们只是开始我们的 